Yawan Sane Chan, what I like to call Moon Charm Herb. This is Payawan Sane Chan Kao, white Moon Charm Herb, noticeable for its white stalks. This leaf is not yet fully formed, so there is no trademark white vein down the middle, which you will see on the rear leaf in the center of the screen now, and the rear. And this is the Don Galung, very rare forest vine tree. The pods, the wood, the vines and the leaves are all used in making sacred powders, oils, potions, carved amulets, lakyom. It has a white flower which is very rare. I have already collected some. I will hope to document this again when the flowers are out. I can perhaps re-edit and add. It's currently not in bloom. The flowers are extremely highly prized because they are considered to have extremely high Mahasane power and the wood is extremely valuable for carving amulets, especially of the Pry Deva and Pry Spirit variety, Lakyom and Inku. The leaf is also used to dry, it is either then powdered and added with other ingredients or burned and then powdered. One can write magical yantra inscriptions on the leaf if one wishes. There are a multitude of methods. The pods can be used to soak in oils. They can be used for the seeds to insert into sacred powder amulets. They can be ground up. They can also be burned and ground and are considered to have high some Mahasane power. The roots are always considered to be of the most powerful portion or pow powerful part of the plant because of its name Rak, which is synonymous with Raka. And Gama Raka means like Gama Sutra, uh, sexual desire or sensual desires. This is Payawan Sane Jan Dang. Dang means red. This differs from Sanejan cow that it has a red stalk instead of a white stalk. It does not have any white or other colored line down the center of its leaves, as does the Payawan Sanejan cow. And its stalk is also firmer and more rigid. It is a very rare plant, but the Sanejan cow is rarer and more difficult to cultivate. It has a greenish white vein down the center of the leaf when the leaf is fully grown, which you can see here, and also small greeny white veins spreading out in the case of large leaves. It likes moisture and the lower part of the forest. Its white stalks are much more brittle, softer and full of moisture than the more durable red stalks of the Wansane Jandang. It's the color of the stalk and also of the white line along the leaf which differentiates the difference between Wansane Jandang, Red Sane Jan and Wansane Jan Kao, White Sane Jan. There is also a green version called Wansane Jan Kiao. This is Nord Lucy, Lucy or Wizard's Beard. It uh, hangs from trees and grows down, gets entangled, and looks rather like a wizard's beard. It gets longer and pointy towards the end and thicker towards the top. And also, like something like orchids, likes to hang in trees and catch the sunlight through the leaves higher up, so it likes a higher ultraviolet level but it likes also moisture. I like to water them by showering the trees and letting it fall like rainfall because they seem to be a rainforest type. Uh, as to its magical qualities and properties, I am still researching and shall make a separate chapter on this when I have found out 
complete or enough information to be able to wax lyrical about it. This is Wan Nanguak, Raving Lady Herb. Everybody knows Nanguak, the lady who sits on the shop room altars, beckoning customers. So this herb is named after her. Its root is especially powerful and used in the making of Mahasane herbal magic and amulets, pry oils, sea pung, balm, meta balms and oils, magical potions and pry oils and for making dry powders. The root can be dried and soaked in pry oils. It can be dried or dried and burned for its powders. The leaves they spring out from under the ground, I'm not sure by which method. And as each leaf grows, it peels away, falls off and dries and leaves a part of its stump. And so thickens the trunk and gets higher and higher, something like a yucca does when it's attached to a tree. So it looks like it should possibly attach to another tree, really. This is the Tongalong dot cow. There are many ty types of galong. This is a very rare vine-like uh, parasitical tree which entwines itself around other trees in the forest and lives in their shade, catching the sunlight through their leaves. It's a spindly tree. It has a very somehow butterfly wing or erotically female figure shaped leaf which is very brittle and dry something like a bay leaf and it dries off itself and dries naturally and dies off naturally and these are collected and can be used for drying up or soaking in oils and as previously described various methods of making sacred powders or empowering oils with uh, the roots the wood and it's very rarely occurring flower, which is a white flower with long, very delicate petals which stretch out and little yellow, uh, like little white antenna with yellow bubbles on them, which is where the nectar and the pollen is, of course. I hope to film some when they flower. This is Payawan Dok Tong. We have two kinds. This kind has a very uh, wide and blurry yellow line lines pattern on its leaves it is slightly rarer and it looks similar to some more common herbs but is not the same herb it's possibly because of this so rare because it is harder to recognize and we have also another kind which is the classic kind also hardly heard of except for those in this particular world of Mahasane herbs and herbal magic and those who make amulets or those who study them in depth. This is Wan Kun Pan, also Mahasane herb, also Kongapan Kalkad, Mahalab. And when dry, they will first go white and then turn black. And uh, when they dry up, they take on actually a very beautiful shape. I think they look like naga claws or something, I don't know, but uh, anyway, they are extremely powerful and rich in their uh, Mahasane herbal content. This is the Peihawan Dok Tong of the rarer kind, which has golden lines along the leaves, which has kind of serrated, if you notice, and they curve in towards the center. They do not come out from the center from a central vein and thin out towards the edge, rather the other way round. This is the more common kind, which is also not common. It is actually almost uh, heresy to call it common. It is not common. It's just a little more commonly known than the golden pattern variety. And this is how it is. It is a darker, more evenly colored leaf, more sturdy, a little bit more hardy against the sun and made to contain moisture. This is Pehuan uh, and Wan Tong, which is silver and gold herb, which was donated from the temple of Lumpopom at Pansuan 
of the Khao R sorcery lineage and carried to me from one of his devotees. Uh, I've also obtained some herbs and roots and bulbs which I am planting and some are used in their root and bulb form for making sacred oils of the meta variety without necromancy. They are also used in necromantic oils as a herbal addition. These will be used for purely herbal oils. This is a kind of tree nut called Prajao Hapa Ong, representing the five Dhyani Buddhas. This is Piyawan Chang Pasom Klong, which has already been planted. This is a bowl of sacred powders already prepared, which is full of Rusi amulets, which are empowering within those powders. This is the ply dam root, which is used in so many Mahasane and necromantic amulets. This is the root of ply dam, has been planted into the earth at my home, awaiting the purchase of land for the ashram. Changpasom Klong is immense Mahasane magic, especially used in Namman Changpasom Klong pry oil with amulets such as the Inma, Setnang, Inku, and the like. These ply dam roots cause the earth to, to go, turn black. And the root and the herb itself and the earth is used in the making of Kunpan Mahasane amulets and Kongapan amulets and necromantic Mahasane amulets. The earth is turned black and it is said that a cat cannot walk past this herb without dying within three days. Uh, children should be kept away from it and not allowed to touch the earth or eat the herb for it is poisonous. It is also used in the making of therapeutic massage oils. Both the root, the leaf and the earths have magical value for Mahasane, Kongapan, Kalkahat magic and Mahala magic. This is a bulb of the Piawan Jung Nang which is planted in the hope that it will grow and that we can cultivate the herb and the roots for amulet making and for the living museum of Mahasane and other magical herbs and plants, trees and flowers which is part of the Buddha magic project.